Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Let me uh, open this uh, second session uh, of our conference. Uh, the session is on challenges and policies to attain sustainable convergence, building on the insights uh, we got in the first session. So we're here to uh, take it further, uh, to uh, discuss what are the policy steps to be taken to uh, to improve, to change, to uh, to overcome uh, convergence fatigue, as it may be called. Now let's look ahead a little bit. In Central East and Southeastern Europe, outside Turkey, the working age population is projected to fall quite appreciably. So this will make for a significant headwind to growth prospects over the medium term. Part of this will likely be uh, appreciable emigration from the region. So there are constraints in terms of how much uh, investment you can generate without running, again, large uh, external uh, imbalances. And so uh, prospects for uh, capital-intensive uh, catch-up are also not particularly good unless uh, one changes something about uh, domestic savings. Better institutions will be key uh, for uh, restarting the convergence process after uh, this uh, crisis. The EU can act as a catalyst, but it cannot be a substitute for a domestic reform movement. What measures can we take to nudge the process forward? First, um, strengthening transparency and accountability. Number two, investing in state capacity. We need to consider very, very carefully the distributional fallout of the economic policies that we recommend. Where the distance from the frontier has enormous implication on what sort of reforms are critical for the country to further progress. Countries in the region, many of them, reached close enough to the frontier where a new regime has to kick in, which is basically moving from imitation to innovation. There should be broad motivating goals that people want, rendering them willing to support reforms that are perceived as useful or necessary to achieve these goals. The Euro area membership offers high rewards to reforming countries, but it may also deliver stronger punishments for countries that have not done their uh, reform homework. Reforming relative to your past may not be enough if the world moves faster. Convergence is not God-given. Convergence comes in the context of the economic area that you are integrated. The current uh, account correction in the region comes uh, from a big drop in the investment side. Incredibly strong dependency in the region for uh, the EU-funded uh, public investments. Some of the domestic firms are lagging behind in terms of uh, their innovation capacity. The domestic firms are investing less. The main impediment is availability of uh, people with the right skills. The risk of falling into middle-income trap because of the low level of innovation, pure quality of institutions and unfavorable democratics in the future. It is very imperative to prepare our economies from a graph for, for a gradual trans transition from efficiency gaze driven systems into innovation driven swaps. Convergence is not here uh, to be taken for granted. There has not been really a convergence in terms of the quality of institutions, nor in terms of the human capital. And there are two dimensions of structural reforms. One is moving closer to the efficiency frontier, and the other one, potential growth rate, which is basically expanding the efficiency frontier. The first one has been happening, but if you compare Europe to other emerging countries, much less of the second one has been happening. Look at the value system of the voters. If that is not changed, then it's very difficult to expect that there will be a possibility, a real possibility, to do the reforms that we were talking about today here. 